There's the streamer named uh, Heel. I forget these names, man. These nobodies. I always forget their names. Heel. Uh, anyways, it doesn't matter. So the point of this stream is really to critique the ruling class and their puppets like Piers Morgan and stuff. Try and squeeze all the all you can out of me. Because um, I'm tired. So just say, Zerka, pause and react if I'm letting too much go. If I'm letting too much go, don't let me be a coward. It's going to get crazy. Kanye is on the stream today. And I don't really want to do any more of an intro because I realized, like, I only give a f about you guys. Okay. Also, people complaining my camera size is too small. How's this? Is this fine? Are we good for this? <sighs> All right, um, okay, let's finish that stupid Guru one in higher speed. Guru, Tyson. So if you missed last stream, you missed a lot. Okay, we're at 5,000 viewers um, because I was giving great takes on why this guy's satanic. Things that have been happening just because somebody remembers something, somebody can recite something, they were elevated, all this will go. Very good times, but in the meantime, when one level of what we believe collapses and before we attain to clarity, there is a danger. What's the danger? One bro? thing that's happening is in the world, heavens are collapsing. Hundred years ago, how many people believed they are going to heaven? And today, how many people believe they are going to heaven has come down dramatically, isn't it so? So, is it okay? Good. Yeah. <laughs> Real good. Uh -huh. This happened. This happened in Alabama. Well, um, Alabama a school been teacher fucking was crazy. going full fire. This Alabama. Full fire. Unfortunately. Alabama heaven is fucking your cousin and the child only has three arms. The audience were not like you. They were all you tiny pups. Catch them young them. policy. <sighs> In his rhetoric, he stopped and asked, what do you have to do to go to heaven? Little Mary in the front row, she's always in the front row, said, if I scrub the church floor every Sunday morning, I will go to heaven. Absolutely! <laughs> Another little girl stood up and said, if I share fifty percent of my pocket money with my less privileged friend, I will go to heaven. Correct! Another little boy stood up and said, If I help those who are in need, I will go to heaven. Correct? Hey, my cousin DM me, You are almost perfect, John. I watched your Alex Jones clip. You just need to consume more liberals. And my brother t texts my cousin in the group chat. He goes, Almost perfect cell form. <laughs> little Tommy in the back bench stood up and said, You got to die first. <laughs> That's a qualification. Yeah. You got to die first. <laughs> so when we die... You think he's a high-level occultist? Depending upon your culture, we will either bury you or burn you or cut you and throw you to the birds. Different cultures, depending upon which culture you are, that they will do. Or in other words, this body is a piece of planet that we gathered slowly. It's good you put it back. I heard that Americans these days are not putting it back anymore. They're building a concrete grave and an aluminum casket. Even when you're dead, you don't want to be eco-friendly. <laughs> what is this? At least when we die, we should put this goddamn body back into the soil. Absolutely. <laughs> that's where it came, that's where it should go. And let but the even that eat they're it. not doing. Huh? And let the bugs eat it. <laughs> <laughs> Some people are planning to take it to Mars. <laughs> Yikes. Look how he laughs. Anyway, you left your body here and went to heaven. What is in heaven? Also, I had a phone call with... We're going to go back to what is in heaven. This is good. I had a long phone call with... Uh, on Twitter, in a Twitter group. I don't know, you can have Twitter calls, live calls. With uh, Martin Screlly. And he spoke Albanian to me. And he's like, oh, Zerka, I know who you are and stuff. And I'm like, no way. And then he was impressed with how much I knew about him and what they did to this guy. And he's like, yeah, man, you should. Uh, I was like, I want to come to New York. And he's like, 
I'm like, can I stay at your place? He's like, yeah, man, we can IRL. And I'm like, whoa, like this is, I don't follow people. I don't follow influencers. I, that's like one of my heroes. He's the, yeah, he knew me. Apparently he's from the destiny side of the internet. And uh, he's like an Elon Musk kind of like centrist to memes, right? And doesn't follow the Ukraine stuff, not that political, but great business mind. And I'm like, yeah, when I'm at New York, we're going to do IRLs with Shkreli. And he wants to, he has a bit of time for Twitch. So he's going to do more Twitch stuff. And he's, I'm like, I want to do a full deep dive interview before we do IRLs. And he's like, yeah, man, let's do it. And I'm like, wow, this is so cool. And so I, I got a high rank in his Discord. He's going to get a high rank in ours. And, you know, he, he should be uh, one of the greatest allies we've ever had, even though Destiny kind of threw him under the bus. We'll try and fix all that. But uh, yeah, super based dude, man. Like just impressively based, you know? And uh, yeah, that's one of my heroes. And we talked about John McAfee a little bit, but I said, let's save it for the doing it with the chat. So we're gonna have him on this week. And uh, if you don't know who that is, oh man, he was like the first person character assassinated by the liberal media uh, because they couldn't go after corporations so they went after a, a Albanian who was cocky and just very smart S huge legend yeah there's a lot of like hysteria around his name they say he's like murdering people and shit it's all fake news look into it deeper and you'll see and uh, yeah alright let's let's finish this some people are planning to take it to Mars <laughs> Anyway, you left your body here and went to heaven. What is in heaven? You don't, you don't, you know what's in heaven? You? No, don't know. Are you? you should know yeah, these no. things. In the, in the Hindu heaven, food is very good. <laughs> good food. Indians, you know. Except in heaven, there is no food. You don't eat. You don't shit. You don't piss. You don't do anything beastly. Matter of fact, there's been some, uh, there's this dark web PDF I downloaded, uh, these ancient texts. Uh, it was like close to Kabbalah stuff, so don't take, you know, just take it with a grain of salt. But it would talk about heaven being a human form in five points of light as this pentagram star. Not, not upside down, but not like just like a five point star. That's how the soul shines in heaven. As in there's no body, they're saying, right? You can't get cut, you can't, you know, you can't get hurt. It's like, whoa. Lives are invested in cooking and eating. In the other place, there are white gowned ladies floating around in the clouds. If you like that kind of ambience, you can go there. <laughs> in another place, you will encounter virgin problems, if that's what you're looking for. That's fine too. Only problem is, you went to heaven without a body. What do you do with good food and virgins, I'm asking? <laughs> Hello? These are all problems you have when you have a body. Once you don't have a body, what do you do? Food, if you put it here, it'll fall down. Hello? <laughs> well, it wouldn't be you eating food in heaven. It would be the feeling of satiation always. The feeling of being full, happy, warm, hydrated without eating or drinking. Now, if you ask these questions, heavens will collapse. Mm -hmm. Heavens are collapsing, I think. Yeah. Nearly 70% of the heavens. It's all because of biology, Oscar Crowley and Nietzsche. That's when the everything turned for the worst. God is dead and we have killed him. Nietzsche is such a cock. Well, he had a book called The Antichrist. Heavens in human mind has collapsed in the last 50 years. What do you think? Oh. And anyway, let me ask you this. Do you have any proof that you are not already in heaven and making a mess out of it? <laughs> do you have any proof? You so, already… This comes from as above, so below, heaven on earth. Anyone's trying to sell you this is ruling over you very quickly. In heaven, but making a mess out of it. Mm -hmm. Tell me, if you just change the geography of your existence, will everything about you change, I'm asking you? Hello? No. If you move from one place to another, you think everything will change? 
No, if this person, one person changes, everything changes, doesn't matter where we are. If we raise human consciousness, that is, if we teach people how to sit here and be just blissed out. Hello? Look at my eyes, I'm always stoned. I'm not on any of your products, but <laughs> <laughs> No, you're not. I'm definitely not. But look at me, I'm always stoned. <laughs> because the greatest chemical factory on the planet is here. To what extent means, per second, your body is processing something like 13, I mean 37, 37 followed by 21 zeros, whatever that number is. To give you a perspective, 11 zeros make a trillion. 37 followed by 21 zeros. That many chemical reactions are happening in this body per second. If you knew how to manage this, you can create any kind of experience you want in this. So he's not talking about chemicals. Anytime you see occultists say chemical, they mean alchemy, alchemical, right? Transforming one thing into a different state and alchemic process which you can do with your mindset and stuff like that um but a lot of like dggers think he's talking about like oh there's a cell right there's a cell in my body when you have this kind of a sophisticated machine you are doing things in a caveman like way this is like we gave you a touch screen phone but you're like this yeah he's Klaus Schwab. what will come out of that <laughs> You're supposed to do like this. The ruling class wants you all to be like this because if I went up to this fucking old man and I slapped the shit out of him and I took his money, he wouldn't do shit. That's exactly the ideology the ruling class wants you to have. They're not worried about nations invading nations. They're worried about their uh, the working class getting up and saying, actually, you know what? Take that bug agenda and shove it up your ass. They're afraid of men like me. They're not afraid of men like him. But you are like this. You know what will come out of it. That's all that's happening right now. So there is a way. Today I can proudly say, across the world, there are millions of people, if they close their eyes in the morning, tears of ecstasy and love every day in their life. Every day. Millions of people. So it is not an accident that one person, obviously it can be done. Just a little understanding of how human chemistry functions. You don't have to go into chemical analysis of who you are. There are simple processes with which one can do. If one is willing to invest a little bit of time in a day, life will become wonderful. Because by curtailing human faculty, you cannot believe you're enhancing life. Right now, most human beings believe they enhance their life by curtailing human faculties. Like, uh, you know, I was, uh, I was in Mysore city. I had to meet somebody, so I went into a building. A lady, over 70, 75 years of age, and, and uh, she's a very petite, small woman. She just comes up to me with a big smile on her face. How are you doing? I... Chanzer, what's wrong with eating bugs? Cavemen did it. Okay, so should I rape you? Because cavemen used to rape. What are you talking about? I don't forget faces. I may forget names, but I don't forget faces that I see. I just look at her. I don't know her. But okay, I respond. I'm doing wonderful. How are you doing? Okay, you talk. Then I go up. After 20 minutes, I get off the elevator and I'm just coming. She again comes up to me and with the same full enthusiasm, How are you doing? So, wow, this is just 20 minutes ago. <laughs> Then I respond somehow and then I'm getting into the car. Somebody who was walking with me says, poor lady, she's lost her memory. She doesn't remember a thing. I said, she seems to be doing wonderful. <laughs> I don't think she was this happy with her memory on. <laughs> right now she's exuberant because she's forgotten everything. <laughs> this is the case with most human beings. Little drink and they forget something. Now they're exuberant. Lowering your faculties and being thinking that I'm well is a serious mistake. This happened. One day Shankaran Pillai, so uh, he was uh, just outside in the marketplace and he met an old friend, a college friend, that he had not seen for more than 25, 30 years. So they really jammed up and he invited him home and he came home for dinner. When they were sitting for dinner, 
Shankaran Pillai, every time he wants to ask something of his wife, he says, my sweetie pie, my honey, my boo-boo-boo, my bulbul, my choo-choo-choo, like this. After the dinner is over and the chat is over, the friend is leaving, the Shankaran Pillai came to the door to see him off. He said, you're really having an amazing life. Me and my wife can't even talk to each other properly. Every time you refer to her, all this sweetie, honey, choo-choo-choo, boo-boo-boo, all this stuff. You're really having an amazing life, aren't you? Shankaran Pillai said, are you crazy, man? Seven years ago, I forgot her name. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Oh, no. <laughs> so many people are well only when they lose their faculties because their problem is of evolution. Their problem is just that they got upgraded and they don't know how to handle it. So tell us, how many children do you have? Hmm? How many children do you have? I know you spoke of a daughter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we want to know about you. How many children do you have? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I won't ask <laughs> no. no, no, you can ask. I have millions of them, only one is my mistake. Oh, oh man, <laughs> I like that one. I like that one. <laughs> I have many, 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 but only one is my mistake. Okay. Hey, this is really an awesome meeting. I can't believe you're here. I'm mean, still in a daze. I'm just really happy to have you here with me and my friend, Eben. Am I, am I stupid? I don't understand that. A guru is not supposed to have a child? Someone said he also killed his wife. Crunchy, what the fuck are you talking about? How did, do you jump that far? Slow, zoom out. This is really almost like a dream come true. We saw you and we were just um, in the stage of just, and you know, just reasoning with enlightenment and we saw your, um, your story, how you became, you, one day you came and you fainted and you thought, Okay, so this guy has the same kind of... Uh, we're so screwed if links don't work. Encuentro con el jefe de la inteligencia del Vaticano acá, porque Bergoglio tiene un jefe de inteligencia acá, yo lo conozco. El jefe de inteligencia... ¿Es, ¿Es un cura o, no, o un sí. civil? El jefe de inteligencia le dice a, Yus, a Yusuf que él es masón, él, el jefe de inteligencia, y el Papa también. Eso salió en la Nación, lo podía escuchar. Yo lo escuchó mil veces porque da, no, no podía dar crédito. No me asustan los masones, porque finalmente vos y yo sabemos, y vos también, que en este país hubo mucho masón en, mucho, en la presidencia. Mucho, mucho. my luck. Encuentro con el jefe de la inteligencia del Vaticano. Uh, why do you choose the most corrupt uh, religion, uh, Christianity over Islam? On what basis is Christianity more truthful than Islam? Uh, on the basis of morals and dogma. When you read Masonic literature, there's only one that they're battling. They're not battling what you think they are. No, acá, porque Bergoglio tiene un jefe de inteligencia acá, yo lo conozco. Chief Intelligence, as I know him. El jefe de inteligencia. ¿Es, es un cura o, o, no, es o un civil. civil? El jefe de inteligencia le dice a Yusuf, a Yusuf que él es masón. Él, el jefe de inteligencia. Y el Papa también. Eso salió en la nación, lo podía escuchar. Yo lo escuché mil veces porque da, no, no podía dar crédito. No me asustan los masones, porque finalmente vos y yo sabemos, y vos también, que en este país. Hubo mucho masón en, mucho, en la presidencia. Mucho, mucho presidente, masón. Ah. presidente masón y grandes presidentes, algunos de ellos. Este, 
Pero una cosa es el presidente de la República Argentina. ¿no? Muchos ministros masones actuales. Sí, ya sé. Por eso, ¿cuál Andá, es el... no, no me has leído, Roberto. ¿Eh? No me has leído. El escarmiento, por ejemplo. No, pero yo digo de la actualidad. People trust destiny more than this guy. De la actualidad. No, no tengo nada. Ah, sí. No, no averiguando. No, porque hay una necesidad. El, vos tenés masones Sounds like católicos, a según vos, bueno. Bergoglio, y hay masones de origen judío. Bueno, te digo, este, este, todos, este todos reunidos tipo, en Malta. Un tipo que Los grandes, ¿no? Todo el día con Vera. Sí. Y Vera es un personaje casi, casi, casi modesto, por no decir siniestro. Ese, ese entra a Santa Marta. Este, el mismo Marcelito. ¿Estás hablando? Con, de Marcelito Sánchez Orondo, que andaba corriendo detrás de ciertos embajadores argentinos en el Vaticano. Este, bueno, para recomendarle bueno. seguramente lugares. <risa> no, la Jalí. Joseph goes, it befitting for God to come to earth, shouldn't piss and be killed by the Jews. Why does God send his son and don't to earth? Uh, none of that matters. The only thing that matters is. Um, Masons fear one thing, and it's the cross. That's why they invert everything about Christianity, but they leave the Muslims and the Jewish people alone. Uh, another thing is they say one of the three books carries the light, but they don't worship the light. They worship the light bearer, the greedy light bearer, right? The evil people. That's what they be the Masons believe. And then uh, they go into great detail which book is the light and why they're afraid of it. And uh, you'd be surprised. Like if, you, if you're well read, you'd know that um, those other books have nothing to do with the war against masonry, like zero. Like it's not even close. Like I used to think it was like, oh, well, maybe they, uh, don't they just fight order and pro-family in every country? No, they don't. They really don't. They're not that chaotic in other countries. It's only Christian nations they attack. Uh, the hardest, I mean. Like the hardest that they attack. The hardest. Like the ones that uh, they cannot let go. They cannot have like <clears throat> one year of a Christian leader. They can't have like, they can't even have someone who's like a lukewarm, weak Christian like Trump. Uh, explain it. Uh, explain what? Explain what? What are you talking about? It doesn't mean Muslims are not fighting masonry. Like, obviously, conservative Muslims are against their agendas. And it doesn't mean that, like, having strong faith in your book uh, doesn't help you against them. It just means that your faith is the strongest with the middle book. Uh, yeah. Islam talks about the Antichrist. It doesn't matter because Islam is not in the lore. Islam is not in the Masonic lore. It's not a threat. It's not in Masonic uh, literature. There's only one Goku that they fear. There's no one else. And it's always Jesus. They don't fear anything else like at all. They, uh, they can't deny Christ, but they can mock him, but they can't deny him. Whereas for the other gods, they'll deny, they'll mock, they, they, or they'll just respect them. But when it comes to like what, uh, what they panic and fear the most, it's the middle book from the three. I know. I was shocked too, because uh, I'm not that... You know, I was never fond of religion until I finished... Like reading evil really brought me way closer to Christianity because I'm like, why are you so obsessed with it, dude? How can you fight something that's not real unless it is real? Is right. Is real. Never read the Quran then. No, I read it one time and a half. And uh, I'm not going to lie. The Quran makes a lot of sense to me. You know, I'm not one of those guys who like copes and pretends like it doesn't. It makes a heaps of sense to me, like heaps. The only problem is it's not a threat. It doesn't threat the, it doesn't threaten the ruling class. It doesn't threaten their magic. It doesn't threaten their agenda. It doesn't threaten anything about the 
like Albert Pike will not write 1,000 pages on it, but Albert Pike will talk, he'll write 1,000 pages against Christianity, you know? Yeah, but I always loved to be called a cultural Muslim for my grandfather, you know, because I didn't spend time on that with that grandfather, so I was like, I want to represent him, but, uh, you know, he was not correct. I mean, and I'm not here to take you away from your faith, dude. I'm really not. Like, I'm not a good Christian. I'm not like, I'll punch you in the face if you approach me wrong, bro. I'm not that guy. But uh, am I a Muslim? Hell no, bro. Am I, am I Jewish? Hell no. Am I a Buddhist? Hell no. Am I a Christian? Hell no. Was Christ real and resurrected and God? Yes. According to the evil people, it's true. According to your calendar and your psyche, 2022, where does that number come from, bro? Uh, according to every way you live is based on a, a Christian principle. Um, and uh, the greatest societies in the world were Christian. Like this, who the fuck denies that? that this, that's, even when I was an atheist, I made that argument. Okay, can we start now? Mm. Also, another thing, those Christians who don't adopt the Trinity are fucking retarded. Like, not to offend you guys, but the Trinity, that number three that the Masons are obsessed with, that is the most important part of the religion. There is an inverted three of dark forces, of satanic forces as well. And that three is God, the mind, and the earth. So God, Son, Holy Spirit. The three is divided into everything, right? But Masons will see it as a du duality of two, male and female. But they're forgetting the orgasm that creates life. So it'll be male, female, and the electricity, according to all ancient texts and all ancient texts had a trinity right but uh christianity goes into the most detail about it now am i those that guy who says one the bible is a hundred percent true i cannot imagine evil people in power not fucking with ancient scriptures i think that's a retarded position to take but what lasts throughout the ages that's clearly true, right? The stuff that we know works for society. <clears throat> Anyways. Um, also, it makes more sense when you realize that history timeline's been warped, right? Because if you're one of those guys who are like, actually, there was 100,000 years before Christ, then it won't make sense to you. But if you're a young earther, it starts to really wrap up. It starts to make a lot of sense. Alien believer. That's so cringe. Shakespeare wasn't a person. He was four people. Okay. Can we play the video now? I'm younger. Malta. Lo deja carne. Lo dejamos, lo dejamos al papá acá porque esto está tomando una temperatura que no estaba prevista en este caso. There it is. Well, Haas took a photo like this to piss me off. Did you see that? only takes three months to hit masturbation. Take a look at these three photographs again. They were the ones of Karl Marx, George Washington, and Marquis de Lafayette. If you missed it, here they are again, side by side. Look at what they're all doing with their right hand. Yeah, we're going to now, why are they all hiding their hand like that? What does this hidden hand gesture mean? Does it mean anything at all? Perhaps it's just coincidence. Well, let's take a look at some more portraits of famous personalities from history. 
Elmi, you want me to keep going with this? Aren't you something crazy? You remember Solomon's temple was built with demons? And in masonry, there's two pillars, the male and female. And there's two pillars in New York that went down called the Solomon Brothers Towers. Mozart, bro, this guy had the worst music. It happens far too often to be coincidence. Mo Mo Mozart's piano was just gay. It was like this. It wasn't like... Very, very cringe. This hiding of the hand gesture is actually from the 13th degree of Freemasonry, which is also known as the Royal Arch Degree. It is symbolized with the triple tau. Now, this gesture is the sign of the master of the second veil. I won't go into the details of it, but basically what this gesture... That triangle that they do, the Illuminati triangle, it is another symbol of Trinity. Don't, don't get confused with uh, pagan Trinity, which is very satanic. Pagan Trinity is this. When you search up Jesuit order, you look at the logo. The IHS Trinity is Isis, Moon, Horus, Sun, and Set, Death. Right? So it's another trinity. So who owns us is the dark trinity. You're supposed to fight for the good trinity, which is Christ. Esther is doing is signaling to other Father, initiates that they're Holy part Spirit. of a secret brotherhood and that their actions are inspired by Masonic beliefs. What they're saying is, it doesn't matter what I appear to be on the surface. This secret only gesture invert. tells you that we are working towards the same utopian end, you and I. We are both enlightened with the illuminating knowledge of masonry. Remember in the Jesuits' oath, they talked about being on opposing sides in public, but secretly we're working towards the same end. That's why we have both communists and capitalists making the same gesture here. Think also of the Hegelian principle, where two seemingly opposing yes. ideologies are rubbed Base. up against one another to create a synthesis. Base. What these famous leaders are saying to the initiate. If you don't understand the Hegelian uh, synthesis of two opposing ideologies, this dialect, think of uh, those orbiters that lick Destiny's asshole and how bad he treats them compared to how good he treats Zerka. It's because I battle with him and I'm not his like friend. And it actually brings you closer together. But there's bloodshed, people get cancelled, etc, etc. And it's the ends justify the means. It's actually very satanic. But it does work, right? And it happens also with like your crush. If you argue with your crush, she gets closer to you and shit like that. ...is that there is a hidden force or hidden hand guiding the course of history and that they are a part of it. It's that hidden hand that we've been following throughout the whole of this series. So it should come as no surprise to us by now that Satan is still at work in the world. These illuminated ones think Lucifer is good and following him will help mankind. But as Christians, we know differently. We know that Satan disguises himself as an angel of light and always has. Attends Jubilee audience at the Vatican. Think of those channels on YouTube called Jubilee and stuff. Think about who's funding them. It's the Vatican. Do you know what channel I'm talking about? Uh, was, okay, while he was Archbishop George Mario Bergoglio, Bergoglio of Buenos Aires, Pope Francis was named an honorary member of Rotary. Make him first pope to receive and accept our membership yeah right now we have two popes which is like in times energy if freemasonry doesn't make sense to you think of it just write it down sex cult of witchcraft i know sounds ridiculous try and debunk it on a debate like i've had a million people dm me uh, John, you got masonry wrong because my uncle's a mason. And I'm like, join VC. They're like, you're not even live. I'm like, join VC, watch what I'll do to you. And they go, just type it in Twitter DM. And I go, tick, 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 tick. And they go, oh, sorry, I was wrong. Like, Guys, stop. You don't know as much as the people who study this, okay? So, 22, hmm. 
Defense Secretary Casper Weinberger canceled plans to go to Bohemian Grove in California this weekend because of the possibility of more flare-ups in the Lebanon crisis. But even without the Defense Secretary, the Bohemian Grove will not close down for lack of power. What is the Bohemian Grove? Well, it's a kind of summer camp for the powerful. An all-male gathering in great secrecy. More from Dennis Murphy. George Schultz, Henry Kissinger, and West German Chancellor Schmidt arrive by car. The chairman of General Motors and U.S. Steel came in by private jet. If you would look at the guest list over a period of five years, um, I don't think there would be anybody of any importance in America uh, who was missing from that list. Cabinet officers and captains of industry are going to summer camp at Bohemian Grove, an all-male retreat secluded in the Redwood Forest two hours north of San Francisco. Oh. Outsiders are not invited. Oh. What's hidden away is a little bit of Boy Scout camp and a lot of fraternity hokum. There are rituals, bonfires, and the burning of effigies. The members live in lodges with names like Wolf and Caveman. Gerald Ford, Henry Kissinger, William French Smith, and George Schultz are bunkmates at Mandalay Camp. President Reagan's camp, Owl's Nest, is famous for its Eggs Benedict and Ramos Gin Fizz breakfast. But for the most part, stories about what happens in these redwoods are hard to come by. A campground statue reminds Bohemians to keep their mouths shut about the grove. I've heard a lot of good music there. I've met a lot of interesting people, and I look forward to listening to music again. But there are employees who tell tales out of school. You know, I mean, half of these guys, you know, from what I can tell, you know, stay loaded or stay bombed, you know, the entire time they go there. I mean, they stagger into breakfast and, and stagger out from dinner. But at the same time, you know, they're, um, they're, they're talking business. And sometimes those business talks and rip... Yeah, I know, I know. I had a lot of trouble believing in witchcraft, but they're not going to teach you that with your government college and university you paid for. All right? But they will drop it through Masonic programming with Harry Potter, which is not popular. It's pushed on to us. That's why we're so obsessed with that kind of uh, occult culture. A cult is a cult that turns to our culture. Ripples far beyond the Grove. Sociology Reagan, professor William Domhoff. Uh, Reagan and Nixon talked at length in 1967 in the Grove to decide who would go first in the Republican primaries. While decision makers are cementing friendships, protesters outside the gate are keeping a vigil. To them, the Bohemian Grove is an all-white, all-male, undemocratic policy-making arm of the government. They want the Bohemians to go home. But summer camp won't end until next week. Dennis Murphy, NBC News, Monterey. It's revealing about what goes on in a little place in California called the Bohemian Grove. That I am very interested in, and you should be also. Time and again, those close to the royal family have admitted that according to the royals themselves, the sin is not in doing something morally wrong, but in being found out. They don't, again, they don't care about leaking what they do there because they actually want to attract high-level mages who are into a cult. They want team players, right? That's why they allowed the footage to be on TV. In other words, Stephen justifies me. In his bid to enjoy his life with as little risk as possible, Philip sought to be invited overseas where he could behave with far more freedom. A favorite jaunt involved the famous Bohemian Grove, deep within the California Redwoods. 65 miles north of San Francisco, each summer, a thousand or more very important persons, VIPs, the decision makers and opinion molders of the Western world, meet in mid-July to relax, attend lectures and debates, and enjoy themselves three weeks. And they do more than that. They have some very peculiar pagan religion ceremonies, which involves a large fire, an owl sitting in a tree, all of them dressed in black robes, and they burn an effigy of care. For decades, the Bohemian Grove retreat was the major social event of America's male power elite and their overseas friends. Mm. And for decades, those who attended went in secret. Another reason, Philip, as well as many others, loved to join them. In the 1970s, when Philip visited, members included Ronald Reagan, George Bush, George Schultz. Yeah, see, while I'm in California, I really want to go there and film. But I'm also getting vibes of, like, like you can do f goofy stuff when you're not masculine, but when you're masculine, you get killed doing shit like that. And I'm not that far away. I can get a whole documentary. In, right? I'm really tempted to do it, but I'm like, I'm not, I haven't done what I need to do yet. Not to infiltrate. It's not like anything's going on right now, but I would want to go there on Halloween with you guys. That would be crazy. It's for Weinberger. Former presidents Nixon and Ford were also members. As well as Can imagine hiring a videographer and being like, okay, so here's what we're doing. You're going to hold the camera and you're going to hit live when you see the big owl statue. All the location, just Google Bohemian Grove, but don't read anything about it, bro. Did you imagine the videographer? He'd be like, bro, I'm, I'm not getting paid enough for this. I'm not coming, bro. Of America's wealthiest businessmen. I have a photograph, ladies and gentlemen, of Bush, Nixon, Ford and Carter, all around the fire, dressed in their black robes, circumambulating this fire while burning an effigy of care. An owl is hanging in the tree. They're wearing these very strange little amulets around their neck. It's all very indicative of a druid or Celtic ceremony.
चीज Yeah, it, it's a male order. That's why they're obsessed with the triangle. When it points up, it's male. The duality is female. The black, white, light, dark. But why they use the triangle? Because it's a boys' club, right? But they're not men. They're very weird. They like rapists, and they're like rapists, and I mean, they are rapists and pedophiles. the music bro what's interesting is a lot of you guys who finish college you get hats that you throw when you finish college up in the air and oh this is such a good book in roman catholic circles so well is the power of the jesuit recognized that the general of jesuits is called the black pope in contrast to the pope who wearing white always is called the white pope and it is implied that the black pope rules the white pope when while even while the former is obliged to make at least a show of submission to the latter we propose in this chapter to so, show so well is the power of the jesuit um, recognized that the general of the jesuits is called the black pope in contrast to the pope who wearing white always is called the white pope and it is implied that the black pope rules the white pope even while the former is obliged to make at least a show of submission to the latter Send me the book. Just send me that book somewhere. Yeah, this guy is definitely working for the Jesuits. Klaus Schwab, World Economic Forum. I want you to live for like 14 hours. That's my story there. So didn't that happen to you? <laughs> yeah, so I thought, that, I thought that was amazing. And so I stayed, I'm um, a great fan, and I stayed following you. And then I was um, talking to Evan, and I was like, Evan, you think we could ever get him down here? You think he'd come down here and talk to us? We never believed you would do it, and now you're here. That's just, man, so mind-boggling. <laughs> Thank you. Really. So now uh, that you asked this question, uh, how to do the Rio user's manual, you know, about on 27th of October was the Diwali festival. It's a festival of lights in India. Because people, these millions of people have been supporting me, particularly for the river movement that I've been doing uh, in India. 162 million people supported the movement. It's the largest movement anywhere in the world at any time. So, uh, with money, with uh, volunteering, in many ways they've been supporting us. So, I thought on the festival day, let me offer them a gift. MEP. And I said, uh, on the Diwali day, if you register in engineering online, which yeah. normally costs $150 per person, I said, it's free on this day for you. Whoa! 740,000 people registered. It cost me a few million dollars. <laughs> now, how do you feel about that? How does that make you feel? Uh, it's fantastic that so many people were waiting to do it. So now uh, I'm still in the same mode. So for all of you who are here today, we'll offer in engineering online free if you register before, before midnight today. <laughs> hmm? That's the user's manual. <laughs> I want you to understand, life is a certain exuberance of energy and a certain amount of time. This all we have, a certain amount of time and a certain amount of energy. Do you have anything more? Mm -mm. Rest is all imagined, isn't it? So this time is simply rolling away for everybody. We may think of many things, but actually time is just rolling away as you sit here. Since you came and sat here, you are two hours closer to your grave. Yes or no? Yes. Hello? Yes. All of us. So you can't hold it back. You can't roll it back. Time is just going. So the only thing you can manage is your energies. If you keep it phenomenally exuberant, you will know life with a certain intensity. If you keep it low, you will know life in a minimal way. So now this choice is yours. Now let's say time is passing, as the day passes into night, you will feel a little sleepy. 
Why? Your energy is like. Now you fall asleep. As far as your experience is concerned, you're as good as dead, isn't it? You don't exist, the world doesn't exist for those few hours. But you woke up in the morning, once again the energy has renewed itself and this is what you call as life. This renewal of energy and exuberance of energy is what you're referring to as life. So, if you want to experience life, if you want to know life, if you want to really ride this wave of life, your energy should be at the highest exuberance level or should it be put down? I'm asking you. Hi. Hi. So, uh, you mean a different thing by saying hi. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm not asking you <laughs> any of those things. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> this. Well, someone grabbed their grandmother in the front row. Any of row. those things. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> this. <laughs> it is. Uh, it is just that most people need. Have you noticed there's a shame to people admitting they're high? They go, oh, I'm high. <laughs> Dude, I was so high. <laughs> I was high. <laughs> Dude, I was drunk. <laughs> I was so drunk. <laughs> it's like a lot of shame to being out of your state of mind, you know, or in a lower frequency. They th like everyone thinks it's cute, but it's like, dude, you're. It's like, um, it's like you got caught with your hand in the cookie jar. Um, Wild Latina is thrashing your name right now. Straight slander. Honestly, I don't really care, bro. I'm over it, bro. She's a bully. Okay, if she t says one more thing about me, Wild Latina, I'll report you. Okay, I just spoke to admins today. I want peace of mind. Okay, go back to bullying my subscribers again. Great look for you. <clears throat> All the time looking for rest, vacation, a break from everything, simply because they don't know how to manage their thought and emotion. I see in the United States people are saying, thank God it's Friday, because they suffer five days and they're going to enjoy two days. Life is not going to work like this. Life cannot work like this. If you do not know how to be joyful, then you are only looking for pleasure. If you were joyful, pleasure wouldn't matter because you're just joyful. Joy is not a consequence of some activity or something that you get or don't get. Joy is an ambience that is necessary to live life. If you do not know how to be peaceful and joyful, well, you cannot even enjoy your dinner tonight, isn't it? Hello? Can't enjoy your walk on the street. Can't enjoy the few people who are around you. You cannot enjoy anything. You need all kinds of stimulus to find a little bit of pleasantness within yourself. When I say pleasantness, let's understand this. If this body becomes pleasant, we call this health. You want this or no? Yes. Oh, you must choose, I'm going to bless you. Yes. You want this body to be pleasant or no? Yes. yes, yes. If it becomes very pleasant, if it becomes very pleasant, we call it pleasure. If this man becomes pleasant, we call it peace. If it becomes very pleasant, we call it joy. If these emotions become pleasant, we call this love. If it becomes very pleasant, we call it compassion. Boom, I just knock him out while he's pleasant. If you're not preaching masculinity, shut the fuck up. You're going to get checked one day, old man. It won't be me, but someone will. Okay? Teach people how to be a fucking retarded hippie. <sighs> I'm very pleasant. Boom. This is what you're teaching people? Passion. If this life energies become pleasant, we call this bliss. If it becomes very pleasant, we call This is what I hate about Eastern... I'm going to call it mythology. Even though there's like, you know, spiritual forces there too. What I hate the most about it is it always assumes evil doesn't exist. Just be pleasant. When you're pleasant, it's very contagious and everyone wants to be pleasant with you and peace on earth. Just, hey, kids, just don't bully each other. There's no, uh, nothing can go wrong if everyone just gets along. Putin and Zelensky are going to get along if you're just nice. And it's like, 
why would I, why would you teach anyone anything? I, you know what's funny? I genuinely think it's better to teach mankind evil than good, right? Evil should be much more researched than good. Because being good isn't that hard, my dude. Like, it's really not. When you think about it, Ted Bundy, Jeffrey Dahmer, these murderers, they still have a cat. They have a kitten that they're good with. They have a dog. They have a friend. Even the biggest psychopaths have good, a bit of good. Right? It's like there's a reservoir of good in you. You know what I mean? Like, you can't be all the way evil. No matter how many people you fucking massacre or genocide, you can't be all the way evil. You can't submit fully to dark forces. Like you can sell your soul, but you can't just let... You can't disconnect from God. It's impossible. Right? You can turn your back on him. But it's not really a disconnect because you're still in his house. And Eastern mysticism teaches you that good... And bad are just yin and yang. <laughs> the Masonic duality again. Where it's like, no, you're supposed to be taught to combat the serpent and combat evil. Right? There's a lot of evil to combat. <clears throat> Eastern mysticism is retarded. All right. Call this ecstasy. If our surroundings become pleasant, we call this success. Only to create pleasantness in our surroundings, we need the cooperation of various people and forces around us. But pleasantness of body, pleasantness of mind, pleasantness of emotion and energy is 100% your business. Yes or no? I agree. I agree. Yeah, look who you're agreeing with, my dude. This guy, this old fuck, look where he works, bought and sold, bought and sold like the whore he is. Look at him, dude. What are you doing with the stakeholder capitalists? I thought you're Mr. Enlightened. Stupid fuck. So uh, if you want to make this your business, before midnight, you must register for In Engineering Online. It's free. Otherwise, tomorrow morning, you can pay and register. Oh, man. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, this has been such a treat. And before we wrap this thing up, we have time for a few questions. All right. Hey, you, not you, I'm them. No, I'm just checking with you. Hi. Um, thank you so much. Sadhguru talked about the Anamaya Kosha, which is the body. Kosha, there are five koshas in the applied yogic sciences, oh, which uh, work the entire system of the body from the mind to the heart to the breath to the energy. Um, I need all that. And the heart. There are thousands of years of manuals from classical yoga, which is just meditation, to hatha yoga, to the tantrika, that um, provide ways of being that um, Sadhguru is. Uh, has expressed the top of tonight, so it's not an abstraction at all. Just like masonry, just like what you yoga comes from hot sex hot yoga, which is break down Tantric how sex you magic. get to the soul of yourself by sex moving talk. through your ego yeah. by practicing goodness towards others. So oh. that's real tough too. Mm -hmm. It's a difficult process. Uh, the, for me, for me. No, the thing is this. <clears throat> well. Uh, just to explain this, a Sadhguru means an uneducated guru. He is not a PhD in all these things. He is uh, unread. I don't know any books. I just know this piece of life from its origin to its ultimate nature. If you want to know life, the only life that you can know is this life. You cannot lo know another yeah. life. Because yeah. you can only experience this one. Can yeah. you experience something else? Yeah. You can only experience this life, if at all, if you experience. Yeah. So. Okay, explain dream state, astral plane, and when we're sleeping. Why don't you explain that life? Uh, if we want to, if you want scholarship, there are many things. But if you want realization, 
in his own way out. He's already been espousing that. If you want scholarship, if you want... Well, everyone's looking at him like he knows what happens when you die. There's no shit. On PhD in spiritual process, that's a different matter. It's an academic stuff. But if you want realization, in is the only way out. Why do you think there are books about life? You should read a book about life only if you are not alive. Suppose you are not alive. Then to know about life, you mm -hmm. must read a book. When That's you are the, fact, the life… Yeah. Hello? The only thing that you need to do is turn inward. Inward means what? Right now the only way you are perceiving anything is through the five senses of seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting and touching. This is the way you know the world. Which is also east, west, south, north, above, below, six-pointed star. None of these things are geared to turn inward. You can't roll your eyeballs inward and scan yourself. You can hear this, but you can't hear so much activity that's happening here. If an ant crawls upon your hand, you can feel it. So much blood flowing, you cannot feel it because the sense organs are essentially outward bound. Right. So, uh, to turn inward, you need a different faculty. To activate that, to engage in that is the most important thing because life is very what brief. Is only miserable people have a long life. <laughs> if you're joyful and exuberant, it's a very brief life. Yes, it's very, very brief. Have you noticed on a particular day, you're very happy, twenty-four hours, poof, went off like a moment? You're a little depressed. Twenty-four hours feel like ten thousand years. Hello? Because only miserable people can have a long life. Otherwise, it's a very brief life. In this brief life, the most important thing is, you know the nature of your existence. Don't add all kinds of uh, philosophies to this, this is very simple. It's like you bought a phone, a new phone. Should you read the user's manual in the first three days or should you read it after three years when you're discarding it? This is all. The first three days if you read it, you'll use the phone effectively, isn't it? To use this effectively, quickly, as quickly as possible. My name is... Because I don't have an issue with that aspect of life. Nor to transcend or overcome. Is this you, bro? For me, when I was young, it was the most sensible way to see the world around me. So I crisscrossed India on my motorcycle. Literally lived on a motorcycle for four and a half years. Since then, I've not been in touch with this, but in the last three years, I've been riding. This trip, uh, <laughs> I got onto the motorcycle because, uh, you know, Native American culture is a world. She got based this book. No scriptures, no archaeological sites, largely, it's supposed to be blowing in the wind. <laughs> so I thought the best way to confront wind is uh, to be on a motorcycle. For me, the wonderful thing about being on two wheels is uh, <laughs> mm, like hours on end, you know, even now. Hassan Piker effect. Sometimes riding over 12 foot Live within your means, and sometimes bro. through the night. Two wheels will not allow you to be inattentive even for a moment. Oh my God. I see human attention as the key to all the wonderful things that a human being can experience. Just say you want bad bitches, If you bro. want to know the profoundness of life, the keenness only of reason anyone, is vital. anyone gets a bike is for and bad bitches. And a motorcycle demands it and gets it. If I have lived to be this old riding, <laughs> that means I must be attentive. So, this sense of, uh, you know, relentless attention that it demands is my you thing. You Switzerland, bro? I'm not somebody who experiences adrenaline, as people say, as speed happens. Uh, for me, as I get faster, as I you know, put myself <laughs> a little more danger. I become very calm, very, very cool. <laughs> That's how I work. So, uh, as the riding weird flex, uh, adventurous, as I do more speed or more whatever else which puts me to danger. How can I donate I to your very foundation, calm, bro? Very, very cool. I don't really experience rushes of uh, adrenaline, but uh, that sense of stillness within me, which has kept me alive. You meditate when you do a wheelie? Keeps me going even now. It's my wish that you must experience this and everybody must experience this. The sense of absolute stillness when you are in... Uh, Which part of your holy book talks about a Harley? Thing. And uh, in th that is the basis of profoundness of experience in human life. So, Kurt, maybe we'll ride together one day. All right. <laughs> it's a beamer too. That thing's a monster. That beamer's a monster. Of course it's a beamer as well.
See, all the DGGers were like, you're not being respectful to his culture. Bro, his culture is a fucking BMW. It's a Bavarian religion over here. You're not being respectful, John. Like all of a sudden, look at look look at him in mask on, mask on. We must get this. Then we live life without you being an impediment in your own life. Other impediments are always there. Hmm? Other things are always there. We need. Only Christians could show this guy up, dude. There's some evangelicals who own four jetliners to go to other cities in the same state. <laughs> when when Christians do the scamming, they don't fuck around, bro. <laughs> oh my god! Or you should see Saudis, bro. The Saudis, dude. I need to shit in gold from the first day of my life. I need to shit in gold. I need to have a golden toilet, bro. To learn to ride it. If you don't learn to ride it, it'll crush you. Of course. You see, California people are riding the waves. Hmm? What is the dream of a wave rider? One day he would like to do the tsunami. Yes or no? One who is really good at it, what is he dreaming of? One day when the tsunami comes, he would like to be riding on the wave. Those yeah, who do okay. not know how to ride the wave, they are terrified of it. This is all it is. The instruments of life must be in your hands. If they are in your hands, yeah. are the whatever instruments, life throws it. The instruments are B, M, W. You is not your choice. What you make in out your of hands. it is your choice. Vroom, vroom. This will not come out of scholarship. This will come by turning inward. This is why inner engineering. You engineer yourself the way you want yourself to be. I agree. What bothers you? And if nothing bothers you, why not? This is Jim Gray right here, sir, by the way. <laughs> uh, if you uh, will make uh, the word bother a little more clear, you mean to say why? Oh, nothing does, because I have not given the privilege to anything or anybody that they can decide what happens within me. So, so anything that happens surrounding you or affecting you effectively doesn't bother you because you just don't, you don't what? What is the mechanism? See, it's just this. As I said just now, what life throws at you is not your choice. It throws all kinds of things. The more active you are, the uh, more number of things are being thrown at you. But what you make out of it within yourself is hundred percent yours, isn't it? Now, if you are a compulsive reaction to what life throws at you, then everything will bother you. Good things and bad things. Based everything on a will posture bother you. in the middle. But if you are a conscious Why? response to whatever is thrown at you, really you will like see it. everything is a certain challenge. Some we can handle, some okay. we don't know how to handle. Hmm? Some situations we know how to handle, some situations we don't know how to handle. So, are you a superman that you know how to handle everything? No. This is not about being superhuman. This is about realizing being human is super. So, it's not that you know wow. everything and you can handle everything, no. Some you can handle, some you cannot handle. But, are you a conscious response to life or are you a compulsive reaction to life? This is all you can take care of. Okay. This guy's bringing the bug agenda of the world economic <laughs> Sometimes it's easy to get caught up in the result, the desire of what you're trying to do. How do you detach, but at the same time help? You've you been Dalai reading Lama Indian stuff. <laughs> You've been reading Indian stuff. That's why this detachment and all that. Tell me, can you experience anything in this world without involvement? Huh? If you're not involved, how will you know anything? You cannot experience anything unless there is involvement. The more profound your involvement is, the more profound your experience of life is, isn't it? <laughs> so where did this detachment come? This is because you got entangled and it hurts. Now somebody told you remain detached. See, if you want to really detach from life, you must be dead. That's efficiency. Hello. Nice, <laughs> you know, I was doing a program <laughs> and this lady stands up to introduce herself. And she says her name and says, I've come from Singapore. In the last two years, I committed suicide five times. I said, stop. <laughs> I said, at this level of inefficiency, you are not getting anywhere in your life. 
five times you committed suicide and you're standing here. I don't like that. I like efficiency. Finish the job. Whatever the hell you want to do, at least you must do it well. So, uh... It reminds me of, uh, I used to be babysat by a Catholic Filipino family. And my best friend, his name is Ray. One day he tried to kill himself when he was a teenager, right? Uh, and he grabbed the knife and he started poking his chest. And then he stopped. And he ran up to his dad and he's like, Dad, I just tried to kill myself and I hate you. And his dad was my dad's best friend. And he's like this. Pussy, couldn't even do that. And he got mad. He started crying. And so he ran from the home and came to our home. And we're all eating dinner. And we're like, of course, you can stay. You're emotional. Don't talk. Don't. My parents are like, don't talk to your dad at all. He's totally a jerk. My dad called his dad and it's like, yeah, he's with us. He's going to sleep over. And they're like, well, okay, whatever. Right? Very like old, old fashioned family, right? <laughs> and we're eating dinner and shit. And then my dad goes, so what happened? He goes, I don't know. Big argument. Don't like my family. And I try to kill myself. And everyone stopped eating. My brothers all look to the right. My mom looks up. Because this guy's like, we adopt him. They adopt us. We're like family like this. And we're, we're the brokers in the neighborhood when we started in Canada. So we were like this. And uh, my dad goes, you try to kill yourself? And he's like, yeah, I put a knife to my chest and I pressed it. And I stopped. And my dad was like this. Well, why did you stop, Ray? And he said, because it hurt. <laughs> and bro the, my whole family starts laughing so hard and he didn't get it he was so young he's like 14 and we're all in tears laughing and uh and he never did that again but uh and my parents kept a close eye on him and then we became like to this day we're brothers man i miss you ray it's been years because you got entangled and it hurt you, now you're thinking detachment. <laughs> no, without involvement, you will not know a damn thing in this life. If you want to detach, the best thing is death, you're detached. Why are you here and trying to be detached? It is just that, as I said earlier, your problem is you're trying to experience something which is not yet. That is, you're having a mental diarrhea. <laughs> You are suffering a mental diarrhea and you think you are engaged with future. You are never engaged with future, I want you to understand. You are never engaged with past or future. You are just having a mental diarrhea, isn't it? Hello? Right now, can you live what happened yesterday? No, no, in your mind you can have mental diarrhea and think it is actually happening again. Or can you live what may happen tomorrow? But you can have mental diarrhea and believe that actually you're experiencing it. Because you don't have a distinction between what is psychological reality and what is existential. This is the problem. You are mistaking your psychological drama to be life. Your psychological drama is not life. Right now, unfortunately, a whole lot of human beings have gone into this. They misunderstand their thought and emotion as life. No, it's just your thought and emotion. They're supposed to play the way you want but you are playing the way they want. Hmm? Just a little out of control, that's all. Don't be afraid. The greatest advice I ever got was if there's something like really contra contradicting your internal values, uh, that resistance is going to ruin your life. So there's this girl named Lav Loon who doesn't know if she, could, she should start an OnlyFans again. And we're talking on Destiny Channel, we're talking to her about it. And she's been coping for like weeks talking about it. And she doesn't realize the resistance of it. Even though she wants the money, she doesn't realize the resistance. Or some people cope with like, oh, I don't want to be religious. But all they consume is Zerka content or religious content. What they're coping with is that they there's an aesthetic that they don't want, but they really want to be religious right and that resistance drives you nuts for like seven years straight and then you go fuck it right and you just give in and it's like dude the less you have of that resistance in your life the faster you get to who you are the better you perform better you box the better you study the smarter you are 
but resistance is like 80% of your failure, you know? So you should stop resisting what you actually want, you know? There's your want, and there's your deeper want, and that deeper want is terrifying you every day of your life. Because that deeper want, like, I want money, but my deeper want wants to talk about things that will get me permanently banned. So I'm just going to do my documentary and say, fuck it. And then usually everything goes great when you go for your deeper want. Like, doors open up. You know what I mean? Uh, but then... Uh, if you if if you're late to it it could be bad too so yeah okay i think i spent like a year doing content i didn't fucking agree with you know well it was like neutral and i'm not a neutral guy like i'm at war so i'm finally the best place i've ever been mentally i was just tired that's why it sounds bad but i'm so good mentally right now like you should see how good I, I I feel in person. Actually, you've been seeing me giggling a lot, like on all these streams. Like I've, it looks like I've been having a blast for the last three weeks, right? I don't want to go back to Canada. I want to be here doing this. I don't want war. Philosophy <clears throat> out of an ailment. I was thinking when you were saying, um, oh, like on myself, like we almost, let's just go to another perspective. On myself, what, what, what's the image of myself? What, what should be my illusion of myself? No, what should be my illusion of myself? Just as a, you know. Mike Tyson doesn't realize that all his problems, all his problems, his toad licking problems, everything, all of them get solved with uh, the Bible. I'm not saying that as in, like, everyone's problems get solved by the Bible. I'm not like that religious guy that says, like, oh, well, if everyone had the Bible, I don't really care about talking about that shit, bro. I'm saying him in particular, who Mike Tyson is and what he went through and the R allegations and all that kind of stuff, uh, it would give him the greatest amount of order, you know? Like, he's upset because he'll either pick the prison where why most people pick prison is because they want order so bad that you they want to be forced into it, right? That's why a lot of them pick up the Bible in prison because it's like, oh, I'm finally forced to read that fucking book, right? Excuse the blasphemy, but that's how I talk. And a lot of people go to prison just to grab a book, but they don't even realize they're doing it. Uh, he's a Muslim. That's cope. He's not. You should hear him talk about God, dude. Like, he says he's a Muslim, but when he talks about God, he says, God is a woman. She could have a thousand tits. She can, he goes all over the place. That if you, ex like, I get you want Mike Tyson to be on your team. Who wouldn't want him? And he's had great speeches as a Muslim, but he, <laughs> I can show you some clips where you will disown him very quick. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? impulsive stuff and no not just the weed smoking like he the way he talks about god is like oh my god would muslims get mad if they if they saw it, it i'm not even a muslim and i get angry as fuck when he says he's a muslim i get so angry because i go well stop doing that he's like, i could be god you could be god she could be god god could have a thousand tits it's all doesn't matter bro that's what he says in a lot of interviews and it's like, I love Tyson, and he's so based sometimes, but when it comes to the divine, he starts to, like, get really confused. And he says, like, a lot of erratic shit. And if you look at Muslims, they're not erratic. They are so, no, God cannot have fingernails. They're so perfect when they're, like, pinpoint accuracy. So when Muslims accept him as a Muslim, it's like you're giving your whole team cte it's not good bro like trust me trust me be careful with uh except um taking in uh tyson because it's not you can't even say he's a bad muslim you have to say he's like a hyper blasphemous muslim there's a lot of clips where it's like i, ca I can't even think of one but it's an impulsive that we watched it and I watched it with all my followers that are Muslim, and they're all like this. 
is we're gonna take this shit off. And I'm like, no, no, you have to watch it now. <laughs> Human being functioning in the world with life. What should be my illusion of myself? Should I be a nothing or should I be glamorous, magnanimous, powerful? What should I be? See, uh, what social qualities we need to exist here well. Let us not misunderstand that as life. Mike Tyson is so stupid. He's like, what should I be? What should I be? Ever since I let go of fighting, I don't know. I'm coping, drugs, blah, blah, blah. You know what you have to be. You have to be someone's trainer and master. You have to still be at high level boxing, but as a coach this time. That is the highest level of fulfillment you can have with what you're destined to do. That way your pulse is still there and you still feel young and you go and you see your protege and you go, yes, 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 you're doing it. And it's like, it drives me crazy that like, Khabib is from fucking buttfuck nowhere in the mountains and he gets it. He's like, okay, now that I quit, I have to do this or else I'll lose my mind. And then this guy is like, oh, maybe I'll try movies and maybe I'll try this and da 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 da. This is just a little sense. If we are among people, we must be in a certain way so that it works for you and me. If I do something that works only for me, not for you, you will make sure. Like, think of it like this, right? If I change my internal values a hundred percent, right? I am going to lose my fucking soul. Imagine if I went live and said Donald Trump is evil. Even you guys who hate Trump would say that's not my Zerka. You would be heartbroken to see that. No, nobody would cheer it on. Not even liberals. They'd be. They wouldn't say, "Oh, he gets it." They'd be like, "Ooh, what happened? He lost his soul." And that's what happened to Mike Tyson. Is like, "Uh, I'm no longer a boxer," and he's just losing his soul. Is degenerating. My life is miserable somehow. Yes or no? Hello. I can trust you on that. Come on. <laughs> If every day we are transacting about something and I make my transactions in such a way it's only beneficial for me, not for you, will you make my life miserable or no? Yes. You will. This is the nature of coexistence. So when we are here together, it's important we function in such a way that whatever we do, it benefits both of us so that this transaction can go on. Whether it's marketplace or marriage, both the parties should benefit, otherwise it will die, isn't it? So this, do not misunderstand this understanding or this simple sense as human nature. No, this is just simple sense. If you were living in the jungle alone, you would live one way. You live with certain number of people, you live another way. You live with a large number of people, you live completely different way. This is just simple sense of adapting to the existence we are. So do not understand this as the nature of your life. No, this is just sense. Some people figure it out early, some people figure it out later, but this is just sense. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Sadhguru. Um, we're out of time. Sad con. Out of time. Out of time. Out of time. Uh, but I want to thank you guys again oh so much for coming. Thank you, Sadhguru, and your incredible team. It's really interesting how Mike adopts a youthful uh, energy and he becomes his dad. Like Mike is just looking for a dad. It's really weird. Even if you have a strong father figure, you still look for another one as a spirit father figure. Like, oh, this guy's got good spirit. You know what I mean? Like an idol and shit. Which there's nothing more cuck than having an idol. Okay, if you have an idol, you're a cuck. Uh I would like to say it's wonderful to be here. I watch Mike fight. Here, here's the scary thing about having an idol. Let's say Heal Mike is your idol. He'll never respect you when you're on his podcast. But let's say another streamer who their, their idol is not Mike. Mike will respect them and they'll be on the same level. If you have an idol, it means you're forever in chat. You're forever like this. If you're... You, if you have an idol, you're forever a follower. It's so bad. Way back, and uh, this may sound a little off, but at that time, uh, there were no televisions in India. We used to get 8mm films to play on the wall, project on the wall. So uh, this would go cut, 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 like that, you know. He was fighting like this, 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 this. <laughs> 
so in somebody's house we were sitting and watching we had watched lots of boxing matches at that time because I was a uh, this I shouldn't tell you. I was in my school boxing team. Really? Wow. <laughs> you struck someone before? <laughs> uh, so, uh, so on that day, when I watched probably the first, first time when you won the heavyweight, when we saw that and uh, much of the debate was going on, I said, uh, I, it's almost like, like I can't wait for this. I'm so sick of this guy. Because yeah, I saw talent, nice. which... I'm, and I was just watching you today, yeah. which I think you're uh, that wonderful man who took you up and transformed a street brat. In. Yeah, Indian Santa, listen to this, bro. Can you believe this guy lives very, like, you know, within his Is that Pulp Fiction? Yeah, that's what I said. What the fuck? I love that movie. Yeah. Look at, look, he looks like he, he doesn't live a lavish life, right? Yeah, you're talking about the yeah. one on that. Yeah, yeah, the guru, right? Bro, this is him. Greetings. Sometimes. Look at his fucking bike, bro. That's beautiful. Though. I like the bike, yeah. yeah. But like, just, just that, like, completely different. What I thought. I thought you. I thought you were gonna show me his house. No, and bro. It, it wasn't gonna have a door. Ten million subscribers, and he starts buying bikes like that. Do you know how much, how much this bike costs, Chad? Yeah, that's he's like an illusion. Your champion. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He did. He did. He <laughs> so he's all the talent too, I'm sure, and that's why he invested himself. Okay, that's the Black Pope. All right, let's go to this. Perfect. This is the first meeting the Interior General of the Jesuits had with the press. Father Arturo Sosa demonstrated patience and a sense of humor, even when asked Look, if he liked to be called the Black Pope. Yeah. I think Mulemi is better Careful. suited for it. Regarding being called the Black Pope, I don't like it. The idea is to be uh, an organization. This was Bro, look at this. The Black Pope, his title is called Superior General. Like That's military. The Black Pope? Yeah, he's got a military title. That And it's a Masonic title. Help the church when, where and doing what the church needs and who is going to determine what is are the needing of the of the church you know the king of england right he when he signs in paper that he's next he well now he's the king of the united kingdom he signs for that island right do you know what the pope signs king of earth of the whole planet that's what they sign on paper when they become Pope, and it's like declassified. And look what happens when you're just born into a family like that. Why the fuck does the Pope sign on a scroll that he's taking title of King of Earth? That's so weird. I mean, and Catholic could, means universal. I mean, if you could do it, why not? Well, I thought it was just a fat Pope, dude. I thought it was just supposed to be like a... I didn't know that they have that much power. And I used to think they're just old men, like the Dalai Lama, Sad Guru, and the Pope. They're just old men as like they're put as symbols. But it's the opposite. They're the highest level sorcerers. That's why they get, it's not just bloodline. A lot of them squeeze in there from sorcery. So they are actually being respected. It's not just like, like the Dalai Lama is not just some old fuck. You know how we always thought it was just some old fuck? No, that's how I think. I, aren't they just like Go, old people? That, that they're just, not. They, they have way more influence, like the Jesuit order inside the Catholic Church. Uh, there's articles saying uh, the CIA is whipped by the Jesuit order. Like they do whatever the fuck. It's all run by Jesuits. And so it's not run by Hoover? Yeah, well, here's the weird thing the Jesuit order takes off truth. Like Catholics think truth is all the ultimate, you know, from God. There's one objective truth. And the Jesuit order says brotherhood before truth, Mean just like the Masons. Meaning, if this guy's a noble guy, but he gets in front of our agenda, cut his head off. Right? They go, they invert everything to win. It's actually crazy when you read about their order. They don't give a fuck. It's Assassin's Creed. Have you played the game? I, I think I played points of it. Yeah. It's a real game designed on these guys. It's done by these guys. And these guys were the first people to have medieval torture machines, which is black magic chambers. 
when they, when they want to do like trauma rape based programming they learned all that in the medieval times the jesuit order they mastered it around world war ii and then in the 60s 70s 80s mk ultra is like perfected now it's like um, now you don't even know who's an agent and who's not right but uh it all came from them right that's why hitler needed the vatican's blessing to start mobilizing all my life i thought the vatican was nothing and now it's like it's overwhelming it's like wow they do run the world i had no idea what you think about what you said brotherhood over truth like think about it if you and i ran a sex dungeon here where we're just cheating on our wives and fucking bitches and our code of honor was brotherhood over truth Meaning the truth of your marriage in front of God is not enough. I wouldn't tell your wife that we have a sex dungeon. I wouldn't snake you because our brotherhood is stronger. Right? Yeah. That's masonry. And if you ever worry about a defector, like let's say we're with EBZ and he's having a mental breakdown. He's like, I'm going to tell Zerka's wife. We would just fucking kill his ass and everyone else would get in line. They'd be like, oh, Moises and Zerka's sex dungeon, they don't fuck around. Like these guys really are dangerous people and you said masonry is bad oh yeah masonry is bad it's a sex cult it's just degeneracy sex cult and the degeneracy makes people really programmed to listen to their i mean the example you gave yes it's very extreme but brotherhood over truth in some cases I understand what you mean. I know what you mean. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, but I, I'm saying that the truth thou shall not kill. They oh, can yeah, they no, can no, supersede no, yeah. it in the Jesuit order, which Catholics cannot do. Like the white pope cannot do that. But the black popes can. They make the white pope kiss leaders' feet. Have you seen it? It's so fucking funny. Uh, and a lot of people are like, well, why do they allow, like, some goodness in society? They actually need innocence for their sorcery, right? Because when these guys do rituals, they need one prostitute and one virgin, the duality. And how can you guarantee someone's a virgin? You'd have to get them as a child, so you know for sure. That's why they go, okay, for I, we for 100% chance know this seven-year-old girl that the jesuit order is raping for the ritual and it's not pleasure a lot of people think it's like epstein like a lot of these people um destiny thinks epstein island is out of pleasure that they're consumed for deviancy and there, there's truth to that but it, when you look higher up at the sages it's not pleasure the feces eating the vomit eating the rape they're not doing it out of pleasure they're doing it out of a meticulous ritual like they're they're doing it out of like pinpoint accuracy these guys right here on the tv <clears throat> yeah you oh, i thought you said herbal magic you know my uncle invented herbal magic he has 62 million dollars and he didn't give me a dime wow, a distant awesome. uncle really distant uncle but he's in canada and he lets me visit and like uses nice cars but he's never give, he's never donated a dime even though he's a distant uncle it, it's up to you to try to figure out a way to close the gap bro he was never told me his net worth my chat had to tell me how much herbal magic is worth i, I don't know what the fuck alive? is herbal Ma dude he's still alive i saw him two years ago i went to his fucking house he isn't giving me shit when anytime i talk to him he goes you're gonna make it foreign life I'm like shut the fuck up and give me some fucking money oh, bro yeah, so fucked up. The Pope. Brotherhood over the Pope because his function. I'm not going to lie, I see a lot of that on Twitch. The new general of yeah. 68 year old Venezuelan says that the Society of Jesus wants to serve the church within their own vocation, which is to serve the church and to support what the bishops and Pope ask them to do. I don't think he has 62 million in the bank. I think it's split throughout the company, though. There's no way. Everything. What attracted me from an early age was the Jesuits are an apostolic force in many areas. 
The new superior. I would do Vegas. Vegas sounds fun. A university president for Is it? Uh, do we have a place to stay, Vi? Social Studies Center for twenty. He is a governmental man, served as provincial superior in Venezuela, and is responsible for the international institutions that the Jesuits. DM me the rooms. I want to see if I'm going to be cramped with you guys. Also a devout Jesuit priest. The Jesuits have this great wealth, a spirituality that puts you in contact with Jesus incarnated in concrete situations throughout the world. During the meeting, he said he is fine and feels calm about his new role. He thanked his predecessor. Dude, look at this, man. Look at this. This guy named General, there's the IHS, Isis Horus Set. Their trinity from Egypt that turned to Greco-Roman demonic worship. They don't even worship the right trinity. And since they're the highest power level on earth from every order, we know Christ is king because these guys rule the world. And the Bible says these guys rule the material world and invert everything of the Bible. They do it in plain sight. And they don't do it out of like, I used to think they do it out of like, uh, fuck the church. No, they're actual fucking, they have rituals. Like, it's so ridiculous that... I can't believe I'm saying this, but it's so weird that the Bible is real. You know how hard that is for me to believe? But everywhere you look at evil, it's the combating that trinity. In every way, not just one chapter. Every single chapter they have to invert. So it's like that book became real. It, and it took me, what, the longest time to realize that. I've coped... I'm 28 years old and I've been coping that long. Dude, every day of my life I would write 2022, April 3rd. That calendar is from Christ. Every day I've wrote the timeline of Earth on a fucking piece of paper. I've had Christ in my psyche and I didn't even realize. Everything I've loved in society, in a conservative society, non-degenerate, no cheating, no molestation, Me Too movement comes from those Christian societies. And I've coped for this long. And a lot of people in my chatters would say, Zirka, you know why MAGA is your religion? And I'd be like, shut up, don't tell me, shut up. But they were trying to say, like, dude, you're a Christian. Like, that's why you're obsessed with MAGA. And then that's when I realized, I'm like, oh, shit, I was trying to make Trump my prophet. I was, like, coping hard with Trump, dude. You know what I mean by that, guys? Like, I was coping for my whole life, and I just... There's this huge shame of admitting to being a Christian because they're such liberal hippies now. They're so fucking pathetic. You think I'll turn the other cheek, motherfucker? Try it. But I've been coping, dude. I've been coping a long time. Yeah, because all my life I said accepting the Bible would bring me peace of mind. Don't want it. I want my war. But accepting the Bible brings you the greatest war of your life. Everyone's going to hate you. It is the best way to live. It, the campuses are going to come after you. The social media companies, legacy media is the greatest life. Come at me, bro. Give me the fucking dragon. Let me fight the dragon, bro. So you're admitting you're a fishy Christian? I mean, I am a follower of Christ, yeah. That, saying Christian is just, it immediately puts in people's head that I'm with those guys on TV. Those people are, those people are everything that has tried to kill me. You know what I mean? And you know what's crazy is the Jesuit order... Their greatest vengeance is the Catholic Church would cut these guys' heads off. They'd be like, oh, you guys are child rapists? Yeah, we're cutting your heads off. And they vowed vengeance that they'll infiltrate the Vatican harder than any other religion. Because they hit the others too. And now they rule from the Vatican. Like they fulfilled their plan. Cause just because we killed their brothers, uh, what year was it, Chad? What year was uh, all those Freemasons beheaded by Catholics? And dude, do you know the Orthodox, the base Christians? They've never once beheaded one Freemason. Not one child rapist. Protestants have never beheaded one Mason. 
Isn't that fucking crazy? It's like the Catholics were wiping your ass for you guys. Come on. And now the Catholics are the worst. Look who's in their house. Fucking Egyptian worships. Egyptian God worshippers. God's plural. They're demonic fucking shit. Isn't that crazy? <clears throat> Man, I've been coping. Because I always hated end timers. You know those guys? And yeah. is nigh. You know those guys? The oh, end. Yeah, the, the, uh, like the movie Little Nicky. The, nah, the I don't know that. Dude that's outside. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, Little Nicky, the movie with Adam Sandler. His nah, nah. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, well, the, the, you're talking about the crazy people outside. Yeah, those like old oh, Mayan outside. calendar people. The devil's going to come up from hell. Yeah. You got, you got 30 days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And now it turns out that uh, the end timers are kind of based. I mean, yeah. I mean, dude, you, you know when I realized the end times were here? I looked at my dad and I'm like, hey, they shut down the world because of COVID. Do you remember this shit happening when you were a kid? Like something this big? And my dad and mom were like this to me. No, son, never anything global. And I was like, what? They're like, even if we were ask our grand, great grandparents for world wars, it wasn't as global as fucking co the digital world of COVID. You could still, you still had places to hide and shit. Now it's like the most lore has happened now, like for end times lore. Does that make sense? Well, <laughs> like very entertaining to find one of those guys and just pay them like fifty dollars. Pull up two chairs outside and just you know what? them for like five hours. All my life, I skipped those movies called Exorcist movies. Because yeah. I was like, this shit's fucking gay as fuck. But dude, now I have to go rewatch all of them. Because exorcism is the only thing that's real. In conspiracy world, aliens are not real. Bigfoot's cock is not real. None of that shit's real. The only thing Big that's real. Not. The only thing that is real. Is that those exorcist shit? They're based in reality. When you talk to priests, they actually tell you it's real. Like any level priest, low, mid, high. I don't think I've ever talked to a priest in my life. That means, you know how people like fake being possessed on TV? Yeah. There are actual real possessions that are not on TV, like, oh, uh, uh. I've never seen that. That's... Have I you ever seen a meth head? head? You know yeah, that the yeah. meth head is not addicted to meth? Manny P. Hall, 33 degree Freemason, he's a Canadian. He was a Canadian who wrote Mystic, I think it was Mystic Masonry or shit like that. He wrote books saying that the meth head doesn't crave meth. But the man who died doing meth, his spirit is trapped in the next guy. And that spirit is craving the meth, not actually the individual. And I'm like, what? And in that same book, he says, we don't know why talking to dark spirits works. All we know is it fucking works. That's a quote without the fucking part. And I'm like, why the fuck are these genius authors talking about this? When you look at all intellectuals throughout history, they all agree on one thing. Ruling class, sacrifice children and do very perverted things in the name of ritual. And number two, dark spirits are real. And I'm like, bro, I just want to play Fortnite, bro. I don't want to look into this. <laughs> I don't want to look into this shit, bro. And now, now I see it everywhere. You know how people say Jezebel spirit for a fucking hooker? Yeah, I heard that. I think. Yeah, now I get that it's real. Or have you ever seen someone playing Fortnite and they're in a positive vibe and they just start killing it? Apparently that's God's spirit pouring through you. If you start playing good basketball out of nowhere, that's God. Yeah, the spirit, the Holy Ghost pours through you sometimes when you connect your soul to it. When you're feeling good, confident, and you have a lot of faith. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, there was a movie based on that. I think, like, Angels. Angels but, in the dude, Outfit. My dude, my dude, I've had, I've been, it's like, remember it's like a painter. No, nah, I don't remember that. I don't watch that Last shit. Angel. No, I don't know what you're talking about, bro. You, have you seen a nice painter? Sometimes it starts to pour through him. The painting does, the paint, the art is doing him. He's not doing the art. That's like a high level faith frequency with God, which you don't really need to read a book. It could just naturally happen. Sometimes boxers go through it. But a lot of times, jealousy and greed and lust. Friendly care package. Shut the, the fuck up, bitch. A lot of times, jealousy makes you play catch up. 
So if you're really jealous of someone playing good basketball, you can connect the Dark's forces for those for that soul contract and play just as good, if not better, than him because you're jealous of his connection with God, right? I see that. Like, I, I see that. And yeah. Yeah, a lot of people will like do anything they can to be famous, and that's like a selling the soul ritual, right? And you know you're selling your soul when your morals are interrupted, right? Like, hey, you got to punch this kid to go viral. You're going to do 100 million views. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Here's what you do, bro. Here's what you do. You go like this. I repent! Quickly. And then God is like, fuck, he's fast. I'm kidding. Don't leave that kid alone. All right, I'm going to finish this. During the meeting, he said he is fine and feels calm about his new role. He thanked his predecessor, Spanish Adolfo Nicolas, who will now return to the Philippines to work where his superior has allocated him as spiritual director of a pastoral center. You ever think God has a sense of humor? Like, why would he make us laugh so much? if laughter's not if he's not into it like if god's not into comedy why is it a part of everyday life i've heard a very old story where like god somehow uh related to the devil where he has a saw side from so yikes if, yeah if who told you that bro uh, you no, need to leave no, that synagogue bro no, no, it's a, it's a, it's a old school uh, old school thing but if you do believe that and like he had a soft side for him he must have some sort of sense of humor you can get along with the devil so, I don't know he blasphemous fuck <laughs>